because remember there are two areas where I see that okay, there's order blocks, but it's inside this spe uh, specific time frame. So if this one hits stop loss five, I know that we are coming for this one. This one, definitely, we are moving from here. I believe we are moving. We're gonna go somewhere. From here, we are turning, going up. Do you guys get it? You can even check on high time frames on Nasdaq. This one has been here. I've been making examples of this one. In Gulf, goes, drops. So that's how I analyze the current market. That's how I'll see the next move. So it doesn't matter how long it will take me or take the market, but I know for a fact that we are coming there. Can you see? We are coming there. Here's another one. Not sure if it's gonna come back for this one. I don't think so. It hates corn. Let me see. It might come back for this one, hey, as well. So on other blocks, you can mix it with the beginner strategy. And then yeah. Uh, can I just ask something? Yeah, I can. Um, so ju I just want to confirm. So okay, so with the order blocks, the fact that you're checking on different time frames. Um, so is it important that we check, um, for an order block to confirm? On different time frames for a validation of the um, order block, or I can just look at a, the order block in maybe M30 and then confirm that it's a right order block, or must I check it in different time frames as well? You must identify an order block. Can you see what I did here? Identify, making an example. I did. Yes. It's a. Can you see? If I identified it on H4, can you see it's big, right? Yes, yes I can see. I don't now. The reason why I'm identifying and getting deeper into order block, I don't just want to buy just because it has entered. I just want to buy. Can you see that it has entered my? I don't just want to buy it because okay. if I if I enter here now, my stop loss it will be huge. My stop loss will be around now. My stop loss will be around 14 pips. You see it. Yeah, yeah. I enter just. What I want to do is, I want to check deep. Is there more order blocks? So can you see now my entry is getting smaller? So that your order, you saw that your stop loss that doesn't get gets um, bigger. Yeah, so my stop loss gets smaller as well. When I identify okay. to smaller time frame, my stop loss is getting smaller and smaller. If I'm on N15, I keep looking for more, like, I keep looking for an order block inside the one of H4. Can you see? It's getting smaller. Yes, yes, yes. Can you see? Okay. It's getting smaller. I look at M5. What do I find? Let's see what I find on M5. I see another one. It gets smaller. So now I'm interested in the area. But now I want to also go on M1. If I find nothing on M1, I'm going to focus on one I saw on M5. I'll just wait. Okay. Okay, let me just do this. So now you can see the market is coming. Imagine having a buy there up there. So now on M1, there's nothing to work with. Can you see? There's so you'll stick to the M5 one? Stick to the M5 one. So I expect the market to turn here. Now stop loss count. Five pips. Let's say you enter around here. That's two pips. Can you see that's three pips? Yes, yes. So that's three point five pips. Here, that's two point five pips. Now you want five pips as maximum, probably. Mm -hmm. So with auto blocks, don't do that thing of adjusting your stop loss at five from five pips. Let's say your stop loss is five pips, and the market passes here. Don't do that thing of Hey, what if it goes back in, touch my stop loss, go back in, and you keep adjusting to the downside? Don't do that. Let it hit. 
because auto blocks should be respected and auto blocks should just turn exactly. You guys saw how it re- how the market reacts on a real auto block. If the market do funny things and start spiking outside, that means it's not really an auto block. That means there's something wrong. Maybe if identified or maybe it's an old auto block. When you when you investigate again, you find out backwards. Yeah, it's an auto block, old auto block. That's why the market is reacting like this. You understand? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So some traders they like doing that thing of when they when the market is coming to their stop loss, they want to remove their stop loss and be like, ah, it's gonna go back. It's gonna go back. With auto blocks, it must go back immediately. Do that thing of reverse it, and then you guys are seeing how how like back testing, for example, helps. You get to see that oh, with auto blocks, it turns exactly the way it's supposed to turn. It doesn't do funny things like spike whatsoever. It turns exactly the way it's supposed to. Turn. So if I say that, okay, market will come and let's say this pay, if I say this pay will come and turn here, it will turn there. It shouldn't do funny things approaching my stop loss and then from then turn. Order blocks, if they if it's really an order block, it should just turn here as respected and then go up. Can you see it? Easy as that. And then stop loss, make sure it's just there. Five pips, five pips is very close. That's why that's two pips, that's 2.8 pips. Even 2.8 pips is far. Even 2.8 pips is far. Because market shouldn't even look outside here. What's happening with this intern? Here's five pips as your stop loss. Five pips is too big, make it four pips. Can you guys see? So what I want you guys to do as for homework, I want you guys to check volatility indexes, all of them, V75, all those things for homework. I want you guys to do that for me. So if you don't have a download derive app, not the app, sorry, in your MetaTrader, download this, because I want you guys to see them there as well. I want to show you that it works everywhere. Download this. Derive.com. So you can trade your V75s with the strategy. So V75, you can use V75 or so you can also use 0.0001, which is like 0.01 on current on currencies, if not less. So it's safe as well to also trade it. So it's safe to trade anything in terms of the strategy. So you can trade volatility index, which is your V75s, your boom crash, what, what, all those things, they work there, okay? They work, they work, they work, they work, they work. So that's what I want you guys to do for homework. And yeah, and it's moving now, that's what I like, it's 24 seven. So your VIGs are moving, it's 24 seven. So. Analyze those V seventy fives, your V hundred, V twenty five, V is it V fifty? All those things. Just identify order blocks and see how the market reacts to the order blocks. An easier way to back test maybe so you just check in calculus. That's the main. Uh, oh yeah, Aston. Yeah. Sorry to disturb, man. Uh, just a quick question. Sure. Uh, let's say now you find an order block on a one hour time frame. Yes. And then you find another one on a smaller time frame, let's say five minutes. Do you stick on the smaller one or you use the one hour? I'll use the smaller one because the reason why I'll use the smaller one is because it's small. So my stop loss will be smaller. Mm. So so what what yeah. what if the market touch on the one hour one and then move? Remember on it it must the, and if if it remember how I, how I showed you if it mm. touch a bigger one hour one right mm. this whole one it means inside there there was maybe two other blocks on a smaller time frame there was one in laying let's say for example can you see can you see what uh, on here right let's mm. say the there was an auto block here. Mm-hmm. And there's an auto block here. 
And you find that this whole area that you've highlighted, it's part of one hour. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. And inside of one hour, 